This tutorial is going to walk you through how to create an opt-in form on your WordPress website using the Beaver Builder page builder. Now you can do this on a standalone page that you only have, the only call to action you want them to do is opt in. You've got a description of your freebie and you are just driving them straight to that opt in. Um, or you can use this exact same, um, these exact same steps to add it anywhere on your page itself. So um, within context, within a blog post template, however you want, this is how you can add that subscribe form in. Now, um, if you do want it solely an opt-in, so no other distractions, no navigation, no footer, um, no nothing else than what you're about to build on your page builder, what you would wanna do is when you're creating that page on the right-hand side, come down underneath a template and choose no header and no, uh, no header, no footer. Now I am using the Beaver Builder uh, child theme and parent theme, so this is giving me the um, option here. If you're using the uh, page builder plugin and you're using a different theme your template options might be a little bit different um, but m most themes nowadays have this option there so you would just go ahead and click there come on up to page builder and actually a side note is I actually um, like to make this URL something really simple um, so if you have um, like three simple steps to a healthier life um, I would title it just three steps. So that way when you're on Facebook or you're sharing it with someone, you could easily type in your URL forward slash three steps and it's easy for people to get to rather than this long strand of like three simple steps to a healthier life, which you can include in the copy, just don't include that in the actual link itself. So let's go ahead and open up the page builder. And then once you're in here, and really before you're in here, you wanna get an idea of the design style. Um, so you can get super simple with it, um, really straight to the point, or you can get as elaborate as you want. Um, I will say the longer your page, um, I would recommend multiple opt-ins throughout. So if someone comes there and they just wanna opt-in, they don't wanna to have to scroll all the way to the bottom to opt-in, um, give them that opportunity and make it really easy for them to connect with you. So on the right-hand side, open up the modules here and I, I've got so many different modules <laughs> because I've got uh, Ultimate Add-ons plugin as well as PowerPack plugin, which really just advances uh, the capabilities of the Beaver Builder modules. So it just gives me some, kind of some extra tools and some cool features there. Um, but Beaver Builder itself has its own subscribe form. So I'm just gonna demonstrate that one today. I'm gonna drag and drop that where I want it. And it shows up right here. So the first thing that you want to do is make sure you get it, you have it hooked up to your email marketing software. So I use and recommend MailChimp. Then you just want to make sure you hook it up to the right account. So if you've got multiple accounts hooked up to the site, then coming on down here, you select your list. Now, if you don't have it hooked up already, um, it's majority of them, you just hook it up with an API key and then the account name, and it syncs right on up to your account itself. So then you, all of these options would be appropriate. Then you can also segment by different groups, depending on, again, how your um, the software is set up on your account. So for me, I would go into MailChimp to edit these different properties. Then once you have the basic logistics hooked up with the service that you're, that you're using, um, you can come on down to the structure area and this can, um, you can change kind of the formatting of it. So overall general properties of the subscribe form. So this, you get, have the ability to do stacked or you can change it to inline. And I personally like it inline um, if it's kind of front and center of the page. Now I would use stacked if I'm do, using building like a pop-up uh, opt-in for instance. So I would use um, just different formatting depending on what you've got or if I've got it maybe on the right hand side with some text on the left, I might use the stacked, but I really do like the inline. Um, and then uh, if you wanna not show your name field, this is, depends on what's required and what you have set up again in your, um, in your MailChimp for instance. So you can go ahead and click hide it and it's going to be just the email box that's gonna pop up. I like to show because I like the names to be on there. Then I'm um, down here. Now this is what your subscribers are going to see and what's gonna happen once they hit the subscribe button. You can get a little bit more fancy and build it out a little bit more of a custom experience for your subscribers, which I do recommend. And all you would do is come over here and you would do redirect. And so what you can do now is in here, you can set up a thank you page. So you'd wanna do this before you are working on the form itself. Um, and I think I've got one in here. So I've got a subscribe thank you page. 
So what that's going to happen is it's going to redirect them over to that subscribe. Thank you. It's going to say, thank you so much. Yay. We're almost connected. Go ahead and jump on over to your email inbox um, and click that confirm button. I don't give them my freebie then. I wait until they hit that confirm button for them to, um, to get access to the freebie because I want them to be actually on my list before they get access to it. And then I always uh, have another call to action on those pages. So for me, I like to invite people to an intro talk. So we, if they are interested in talking about a web design project, they have that um, kind of that next level of guidance on what I where I want to direct them to. So it's a really good suggestion. You don't have to do that. Um, you can just have a simple note saying thanks for subscribing. Um, you know, just check your email. Up to you. Then. Next over is just really customizing it. So um, subscribe button. Do you want it to say su subscribe or I'll move this over. Subscribe or maybe it's um, download free as a common one. Um, do you want an icon on there? Um, icon position, button colors, hovers. Um, now you want to really stay on brand. So if you've got your brand colors already preset, it'd be underneath of here, underneath of color presets. So these are my brand colors that I would use. Um, and you would just select the ones that you want to stay consistent with the rest of your site, uh, the round corners, font size, the padding of the button itself. And then reCAPTCHA is really only if you're going to be using that. However, I really want to bother it with your subscribe forms itself. reCAPTCHAs, I would do um, that for contact forms, but not for your subscribe or not for your subscribe forms. So then what you would just do is click save. You would add in your text. So let's say we want to do uh, text and you'd have your copy all ready to go. So this would be your heading text. So attention grabber, and this would be the text for the body, a little bit more information, some instructional text such as subscribe. And as soon as you subscribe or once you confirm, you'll get whatever they get. So you'll have that in there. You can change the heading. Maybe I want to change this to heading three. Click save. So we've got there. I can drag and drop. Maybe I want to have um, a photo over here on the right hand side. Uh, select a photo. And which one do I want to do? I'll do just me. I'll click save. I don't know if that's knocked over. Save. Then come on over here. So this is a good example. On I wouldn't want to use the inline anymore formatting here. I would want to come back in here and click stacked. So click save. And then it looks a little bit nicer. Now again, I would definitely clean this up. This is not what the final product would look like, but you get a general idea on how you can add that. Now I do want to say if you've got Power Pack or Ultimate Add-ons um, installed, they do have a little bit more functionality um, if you wanted to take the um, customization of the form a little bit more. And I'll just qu quickly show you the difference here. So I'm going to grab it. I like to use Power Packs. And right off the bat, you can see, so you've got the basic same idea here, but you can see there's a little bit more um, customization options for you. So here, compact, I actually really like to use this one where you have first name, email, and then subscribe. But then you also have the ability to edit the, uh, the form itself. So if you want to have a background image, do you want to have a shadow of the form? If you want to kind of have the box there, the paddings for it, um, the inputs. So here in this subscribe form module, you can actually edit the or customize the appearance of the input fields, whereas you couldn't do that here. Um, button, it would be pretty similar. Um, the one that I like here is actually you can, um, there's actually a border property and I like to use borders for my buttons. Um, so here it's basically just what color do you want. So if you want the power, if you want to customize the button, you can use that power pack subscribe form. Um, messages, same functionality, um, the redirect, or do you want to have that message? Is there anything else underneath of here? Oh, the top topography. Um, so you can change the individual um, text, the font, the size, uh, you know, whichever you want to select. So there's a lot more um, ability to customize that. And so I typically, when I'm building out sites, I like to use Power Packs and I use Power Packs on my own. Then um, when you are all done, you would make it look a lot better than this. And then you would just click done and publish. Now, just for an example, kind of the end product. So this is an example of mine that I have. Um, I have really simple and clean branding. So this is all that I needed. And then at the bottom, now if you do have um, removed the header and the footer, so there's no navigation available, 
I like to make it easy for the people on my site. So if they land there and they don't want to opt in, if they're like, oh, I, I didn't want this, um, I like to make it simple. So on the bottom here, I have a click here to return to the main site so they can go right back to my homepage if they want and it doesn't really just kind of lock them out. So they've got access to that if they'd like. Um, so that gives you a general overview of how to create an opt-in form on your website using the Beaver Builder page builder inside of WordPress. Any questions at all, pop them below in the comment section of the video. And if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe for more updates and videos just like this one.